so this is a video to show you how to do the colour wheel and how to mix your different uh, colours. So you will need, I'm using a number three round brush and this is a new one so the strokes should be uh, nice and even. You will need to trace your colour wheel onto, I'm using uh, the, the reverse of a mount board. I use these mount boards to practice designs and colours and I'm using the reverse of it so that the colours show up. If you haven't got mount board, you do want a decent quality paper. Um, one pad that I use quite often is this mixed media paper because it will take acrylic, watercolour, um, charcoals, it will take everything so your paints aren't going to soak through but your, your average copier paper is probably not going to work. So just find something suitable to be painting on. Uh, obviously you want wa your water bowl uh, and some kitchen roll or uh, shop paper just to dry and clean your, your brush off with. So we're going to start with um, the three primary colours of blue, red and yellow. And you're going to put those in three of these squares. So I'm going to start with the red. I'm going to wet my brush and I'm just going to take the moisture out and then I'm going to start with the red. So to load your brush, this is a homemade wet palette that I'm using, you want to draw the paint into your brush. It's almost like painting the paint into your bristles. You want it nice and fully loaded. You want to try and avoid Getting the paint so far up, it ends up in the furrow. If you get it in there and uh, the paint dries, it will splay your bristles and then you won't get nice strokes. So I'm just going to demonstrate the comma stroke and use this for the colours. So we put pressure onto the brush and as we start to move and raise the brush, we release the pressure. And that one has splayed which is really frustrating because it's a brand new brush. So pressure, release pressure. I'm going to have to change that brush. Pressure, start to move and release pressure. This feathering here should not be happening I may need to change my brush. Now I'm just going to fill this segment and then I'm going to do the same with the blue and the yellow. You can mix it up a bit. This is all about the colour, but it's also a good opportunity for you to be able to practice the comma stroke because it is used an awful lot in folk art and decorative painting. So it will give your colour wheel something different. So while I do the yellow and the blue, I'm going to fast forward those. Between each colour, rinse out your brush and take out the excess moisture. Now that we have the three primary colours in, the next colours we're going to make mixing these primary colours is going to be purple, green and orange. 
and you're more or less going to um, have equal parts, not more or less, <laughs> you're going to have equal parts of paint. So for the purple, we'll take a scoop of the red, and I wouldn't normally brush mix, but we're only doing small amounts, and some of the blue. And you're going to mix those together. Now that's still very blue. So I'm going to take a bit more red. And that's a nice deep purple. It's really good to play with mixing your colours for other projects that you might do. So again, I'm just going to, it's good practice, the comma stroke. It does look very dark, but it is a very dark, deep purple. Lovely. And just fill each of your sections. Put in the comma strokes wherever you like. This is about the colour as opposed to any pattern. But you can arrange them in any way you choose. I'm just going to um, use up what's there r rather than making up any more. That wasn't a very good one. Add the teeniest bit of water to just get a little bit more paint out of that mix and just go over that. So that is your purple. And if you were mixing colours, any of these uh, colour mixes, for something specific, you could make it more blue or more red. Um, but we're going to add different ones to it anyway. So I will be doing the same now with the blue and the yellow to make a green and the red and the yellow to make an orange. So that's the main colours, the red, blue and yellow, and the mixing, red and blue to get purple, yellow and blue to achieve green, and yellow and red to achieve orange. These outer segments are to move that one stage further. So each one here we will, we will be doing a bluey green, so it will be more blue than green. And here, a more blue purple. Here we'll have purple blue and a purple red. This will be more red purple and a more ready orange. And so on, all the way round. You've already got your colours on your palette, how you mixed. So you'll be mixing them up again to get the purple or as close to, and then adding more red and more blue for these segments. Same for your green, more blue, and then more yellow, and so on, until you've completed all of these segments and you can see the different shades you can get. I'll do that on time-lapse, um, and I will just continue using my comma stroke because it's good practice and good for um, it's just good practice for colour mixing and the comma stroke is good practice for you to do. I'm, I'm going to take this bit out. <laughs> take a breather so that I can chop that bit out. Start that bit again. Mixing your colours is really good practice 
when you don't have a particular colour to hand, you'll have an idea of what you need to use to obtain as close to the colour as you can. Um, doing this with this round brush, I did change my brush. I'm now using an Athena number no. four round brush, um, which are, are lovely. Um, and I shall continue these segments with the comma stroke because it's just really good practice. The comma stroke is, is used so much in decorative painting and folk art that the more you do it, even for something like this, the better you get and it will just become second nature to you. So you can see that the differences are really, they're quite subtle, but they are there. I'll try and get a, a really good photograph. So that was very much the yellow green and then more of a bluey green or a green blue should I say and that's a very blue green. So just out of these three primary colours we're already getting lots of different shades. So I'll continue with this and then bring it back to you once it's complete but you will be mixing here for the blue purple and the purpley blue purple red ready purple and you just basically you're going to be putting more blue and more reds in the different sections Thank you. 